Hello, Mr. Buffett. I got two short questions. One is how do you find intrinsic value in a company? Well, intrinsic value is what is the number that if you were all knowing about the future and could predict all the cash that a, a business would give you between now and Judgment Day, discounted at the proper discount rate, that number is what the intrinsic value of business is. In other words, the only reason for making an investment and laying out money now is to get more money later on, right? That's, that's what investing is all about. Now, when you look at a stock, when you look at a bond, so it means the United States government bonds, it's very easy to tell them what you're going to get back. It says it right on the bond. It says when you get the interest payments. It says when you get the principal. So it's very easy to figure out the value of a bond. It can change tomorrow if interest rates change. But you are, the cash flows are printed on the bond. The cash flows aren't printed on a stock certificate. That's the job of the analyst is to print out, change that stock certificate, which represents an interest in the business, and change that into a bond and say, this is what I think it's going to pay out in the future. When we buy you know, some new machine for Shaw to make carpet, that's what we're thinking about, obviously. And you, you all learn that in business school. But it's the same thing for a big business. It, it, if you buy Coca-Cola today, the company is selling for about 110 to $15 billion in the market. The question is, if you had 110 or $15 billion, you wouldn't be listening to me, but uh, <laughs> I'd be listening to you, incidentally. Uh, but the question is, would you lay it out today to get what the Coca-Cola company is going to deliver to you over the next two or three hundred years. The discount rate doesn't make much difference after uh, as you get further out. But, and that is a question of how much cash they're going to give you. It isn't a question of, you know, it isn't a question of how many analysts are going to recommend it or what the volume in the stock is or what the chart looks like or anything. It's a question of how much cash it's going to give you. And that's the only reason. It's the true if you're buying a farm, it's true if you're buying an apartment house, any financial <laughs> asset, oil in the ground, you're laying out cash now to get more cash back later on. And the question is, is how much are you going to get, when are you going to get it, and how sure are you? And when I calculate intrinsic value of a business, when we buy businesses, and whether we're buying all of a business or a little piece of a business, I always think we're buying the whole business because that's my approach to it. I look at it and say, what, what will come out of this business and when? And what you really like, of course, is them to be able to use the money they earn and earn higher returns on it as you go along. I mean, Berkshire has never distributed anything to its shareholders, but its ability to distribute goes up as the value of the businesses we own increases. We can compound it internally, but the real question is, Berkshire selling for, we'll say, 105 or so billion now, uh, what can we distribute from that 100, if you're going to buy the whole company for 105 billion now, can we distribute enough cash to you soon enough to make it sensible at present interest rates to lay out that cash now? And that's that's what it gets down to. And if, the, if you can't answer that question, you can't buy the stock. You know, you can you can gamble in the stock if you want to, or your neighbors can buy it. But if you don't answer that question, and I I can't answer that for for internet companies, for example. And there are a lot of companies, there are all kinds of companies I can't answer it for, but I just stay away from those. Number two. So you got formulas involved in finding intrinsic values on certain companies. I mean, you've got a mathematical system it's set up. Just kind of present value of future cash, yeah. Okay. Second short question is, why haven't you uh, written down your set of formulas or your strategies in written form so you can share it with everyone else. Well, I think I actually have written about that. Uh, if, if you read the annual reports over the recent years, in fact, the most recent annual report, I, I, I use what I've just been talking about. I use the illustration of Aesop. Because here Aesop was in 600 BC. Smart man. Wasn't smart enough to know it was 600 BC, though. I mean, <laughs> would take a little foresight. Uh, uh, but Aesop. You know, in between tortoises and hares and all these other things, he found time to write about, you know, birds. And he said, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Now, that isn't quite complete. Because the question is, how sure are you that there are two in the bush? And how long do you have to wait to get them out? Now, he probably knew that, but he just didn't have time because he had all these other proverbs to write uh, and had to get on with it. So, but he was halfway there in 600 BC. That's all there is to investing, is how many birds are in the bush, when are you going to get them out, and how sure are you? Now, if interest rates are 15% rather than 
roughly, you've got to get two birds out of the bush in five years to equal the bird in the hand. But if interest rates are 3% and you can get two birds out in 20 years, it still makes sense to give up the bird in the hand because it all gets back to discounting against an interest, uh, an interest rate. The uh, problem is often you don't know, you know, not only how many birds are in the bush, but in the case of the internet companies, there weren't any birds in the bush. But, uh, uh, but they still take the bird that you give them if they're in the hand. Uh, but it's, but I, I, I actually have written about this sort of thing and uh, stealing heavily from Aesop who wrote it some 2,600 years ago.